Hello and welcome to the Blood Reds Morning Bulletin. I'm joined by my Liverpool.com writer, David Lynch. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Arthur and some of the changes proposed to the League Cup, um, which uh, which is going to be discussed today by, um, I think, Premier League officials and uh, a lot of other officials in the EFL. But first of all, uh, let's talk a little bit about Arthur's performance against Rochdale. David, uh, did you watch the game? Did you keep an eye on it? Well, what did you think? Yeah, so so a few bits and bobs, and um, yeah, a, a good hour for him. Really, it's sort of important to get those minutes in his legs because I think we saw in that that game in in Naples that he's a little bit off it. He's you know he hadn't been involved massively in preseason at Juventus and 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 sort of needed the minutes really and 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 to get himself back to match sharpness. So the the fact he's had the ability to do that over a couple of games now, sort of the. He played for the under twenty ones, didn't he, the other day, and then it, and then he's got involved uh, in this Papa John's game, and I think, yeah, really important for him to to get those minutes under his belt because I think you know, although some midfielders are coming back after the international break and things are sort of easing on that side of things, um, you know, I think Liverpool did need another option in there, and if he can become that, you know, we we know it was a bit of a almost a little bit of a panic buy, really a bit of a panic signing towards the end of the window uh, because those injuries hit, but I think if 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 Jurgen Klopp can get a tune out of him. You know, we spoke when he actually signed about his, his the quality he has shown previously and the fact he's played for Brazil and, and the clubs he's played for, the level he can play at. Um, yeah, if he can make himself and cement himself as a, a real option for Jürgen Klopp, that will only really help things. Absolutely. I think he looks really promising in some of his link-up play. And, uh, of course, uh, Liverpool's under-21 side almost got a result against Rochdale. They were kind of, they were kind of unlucky to concede towards the end while... Arthur wasn't on the pitch uh, at the time. Of course, Jay Spearing came on to replace him, which is not a, a substitution I think we would have envisaged uh, <laughs> a, 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 even a year ago. <laughs> being, uh, you know, going happening at, at Liverpool's under twenty one side, but it is really encouraging that he has been able to start two games now consecutively within the space of a few days. Uh, that's surely a, a step in the right direction. Yeah, you just think that those minutes will, will you know, you'd hope by basically the, the point at which we reach the end of the international break that, that Jurgen Klopp will consider him sort of fully match fit and then he's then he's available to to use as he sees fit. I think it'll be interesting at that point because obviously Jordan Henderson is now fit again, Thiago Alcantara is back, uh, you know, Fabinho is a, is a nailed on starter, James Milner is fit, Harvey Elliott's there available, we, we, Curtis Jones we don't quite know just because they're going to be really careful with him because of the nature of his injury but there's a lot of options there and then, you know, Oxley Chamberlain and Cater are, are expected to be back in October, albeit maybe not at the start of the month. But, you know, towards the end of the month there, you're looking at sort of a, a real embarrassment of riches in central midfield. And that is, you know, not a position that Jürgen Klopp's been in for the start of the season. So, you know, it could really change things and it'll be interesting to see where Arta sort of fits in in that. You know, can he really push himself up the pecking order or because he's a loan signing, will, will Jürgen Klopp see it as well? You know, there's more value in me, say, giving the minutes to Curtis Jones or Fabio Carvalho or Harvey Elliott or, you know, even even Naby Keita and, and Alex Oxley chamberlain even with their contract situations, are they slightly ahead of him in the pecking order? It'll be really interesting to see how it shakes out and, and what impact he can have for Liverpool, basically, because, you know, he's been described as, he, as a sort of Thiago light. So can he come in and sort of play that role and, 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 and rotate with Thiago? That would be really handy if it can help him avoid the injuries that he tends to pick up. How much of a chance do you think he has of making this deal permanent? I mean, like, when he first came in, his, his first interview for Liverpool, he seemed really buzzing to be here and determined to make something of this this move. Uh, obviously, we haven't seen much of him so far, but how much of a chance uh, do you think he, he does have to, to, to make a mark potentially at Liverpool? Uh, I, without, without wishing to be harsh, I think it's very, very slim. Uh, you know that's not not sort of uh, casting aspersions on the player at all. You know the, the level of quality is there, and he's he's played for some great clubs so far in his career. But I just think the way the deal was done, um, you know, very last minute, the fact that Liverpool were very quiet about the fact that there was a permanent clause in there that only ever came out from the Juventus side. I I just don't get the impression that Liverpool have any real intention of, of triggering it although I doubt they've said that to the player because it's nice to have that carrot almost of saying okay if you play well you can earn a permanent move 
I, I just think the way Liverpool operate in the transfer market, that they will have long-term targets that they'll want to stick to. And I, I just can't see it. I mean, he, he can never rule it out. I suppose if he plays out of his skin between now and the end of the season, maybe maybe he changes the mind because the, the, the fee is not actually that much in relative terms, is it either? So, you know, to have someone of that experience and if he proves himself, then maybe it'll change some minds. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sceptical about that happening, to be honest, because I think Liverpool were... You know they're, they're very minded to to stick to the, the long term targets, and I, I don't think Arthur has ever been one of those. He's a bit more of a stick and plaster, and I, I don't think even some good performances between now and the end of the season will probably change their minds on that front. To be honest, yeah, I think he's been kind of unfortunate as well in in the way he's come in, and obviously he hasn't started a game in over 150 days. Uh, had he perhaps been fit when he arrived, then. Uh, perhaps that would have been his opportunity to make a mark. But now with Liverpool's first choice options coming back, uh, it, it, it is looking a lot more difficult for him to, to break into the side. Yeah, exactly. That's it. You know, We spoke about all these players coming back from injury and that just makes things tougher for him to get any minutes. Then you're looking at a position where, OK, well, we can give him a run out in the League Cup. But again, you know, even that's sort of hard to see because you think you know, the, the younger players are there, you want to get minutes into them. You know why would you why would you opt for the loan signing who you don't initially intend on signing permanently anyway? So it's going to be really difficult for him to pick up minutes, to be honest. Or even you know I think he'll pick up the odd few because I think, like I say, maybe he can emerge as that rotational option with Thiago in terms of you know can he replace him in the last half hour of games and and, and see things out and stuff like that. But I think and there are an awful lot of games packed into an awful you know really short space of time so that will help him in terms of getting some appearances but in terms of turning that into even semi regular starts it's it's just really difficult to see where that will be if if all the other midfielders you know remain fit from now on so yeah i think it's i think it's going to be hard for him to change Liverpool's minds really hmm. i think bruce has made an interesting comment in the comment section he, he talks about if Cato and Oxley leave, of course, their contracts are running out at the end of the summer. Then he suggested maybe it's best to keep him. He would have had a long time to bed in. Would you agree with that assessment? I mean, obviously, if Cato and Oxley chamberlain both leave, then it is going to be difficult to, to bring in perhaps two or potentially even three midfielders. Uh, obviously, Jude Bellingham is the main target, but you'd feel like he wouldn't be enough necessarily to... Uh, fill the gaps that Liverpool will have in that midfield. Well, this is it, and I think we spoke about this before that, that Liverpool have given themselves a serious problem coming up in the in the summer um, in terms of what they're going to have to do in midfield because you know Alex Oxlade Chamberlain, Naby Keita will leave. James Milner uh, very unlikely he gets a new contract as well. So that's you know that's three options who you know have, have in recent years have played some significant minutes. You've got to replace them, and and then you know this idea that that Jude Bellingham, at, you know, I know that Liverpool really like him. I don't, you know, that's no secret. But you look at the other clubs who are in for him. I I think it's going to be a serious, serious issue. And I I just I I'll, I'll be honest. I I really struggle to see it unless unless the sporting project really really appeals to the player. It's very difficult to see it, and and, and it's not it's you know it's not just a case of being dismissive about. Um, you know, okay, well, you'll go there for the, the bigger wages or anything like that. Well, you, you will probably get paid bigger wages at Real Madrid and Manchester City, but they're also really attractive clubs to play for. You know, who wouldn't want to play for Pep Guardiola or Carlo Ancelotti and teams that consistently win trophies? You know, Liverpool have been very good in recent years, but it's they're not reaching those levels and they probably pay less. So it's, you know, very difficult to see that happening. So, so Liverpool have got a problem there, even if he is their number one, the main, you know, the marquee signing that they want to make in midfield. And then they probably have to make another as well. So it's it, it's a really difficult situation. You know, maybe that is one of the things that if Artur does play well, is really appealing about him is the fact that he's already in. You don't have to do all that settling in period. He knows the system. He knows his teammates. He knows the area. He, you know, all those little things that come into it that could really sort of boost things in terms of his appeal. So, yeah, maybe that is one thing that, that really goes to him because Liverpool, are, you know, otherwise they're going to have to do an awful lot of work on the midfield next summer and that, you know, causes problems. Yeah, it's, that's going to be an interesting thing to keep an eye on. Uh, I just wanted to touch briefly on the changes that are being potentially discussed. Uh, I think they will come into effect in 2024, 2025 uh, to the League Cup. 
and the FA Cup. I think the most significant changes would be in the League Cup for Liverpool, uh, which proposes that um, any English club competing in European competition will not compete in the League Cup. Uh, they will have the option to play their under-21s or just not compete at all. Uh, what, what do you make of those changes? Uh, do you think that's a step in the right direction? I mean, obviously, Jurgen Klopp has been an advocate of playing less games in the calendar. Uh, but at the same time, Liverpool have had a pretty good experience in the League Cup recently. So I guess a bit of mixed emotions, really, with that one, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a real shame that it's had to come to this, that the fact that, you know, we're, we're just trying to constantly pack games into other tournaments and, and, and you know, in, involve, you know, there's the idea of this, uh, you know, a bigger Club World Cup and things like this, and, 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 and space has got to be found elsewhere. And for the teams who are already in Europe, you know, the, the, the games are really piling up. So these things add up and, and, and something's got to give. And, and, and in this case, it looks like, you know, the League Cup is the thing that's on the table being discussed. I mean, it's been spoken about before in terms of, of teams in Europe not competing in it, but I just think it's a, you know, it's a, it's a real shame that that, you, I, I know why it would be the first thing that people want to cut because it's probably the thing that gets the least revenue, but in terms of, you know, it, it's historic value and I think those, you know, the two-legged semis and things like that, it's got real appeal. I, you know, really enjoy the League Cup and I think it, it's also a fantastic opportunity to use young players and not just in a way of, you know, just using it as an under-21 tournament. I think, you know, you can see a nice mix of fringe and young players and that that's, you know, it, it, it feels like real first team experience for those young players. So, you know, rather than just throwing them in, in, in say like the Papa John's, for example, it's very, you know, sort of different setup to that. Um, so it, it would be a real shame to lose that. But it, but I agree that, you know, something has to be done in terms of the, the, the amount of minutes that are being played by all these players. And, and, you know, there's a real risk of burnout there. So, and I understand that difficult calls need to be made, but it's, yeah, the, the idea of just, ditching the League Cup from Liverpool's calendar doesn't seem particularly appealing to me as someone who sort of likes the history and likes the setup of that tournament. Yeah, I think I have to agree. It's going to be interesting well, to see if those proposals do go through. Uh, I think that about wraps up for today. Thanks, David, for joining me and thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, as always, there's going to be plenty of content today on Blood Red and Liverpool.com as well, so do make sure to check that out. Thanks.